Duncan, let's talk about American Sniper. Uh, people took to Twitter immediately after seeing the movie, talked about how much they were impacted mm. by it. Uh, let me read a couple of these tweets for you. American Sniper makes me want to go shoot some effing ragheads. American Sniper made me appreciate soldiers a hundred times more and hate Muslims a million times more. I mean, mission accomplished, oh. right? Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, do you know, uh, do you know much about uh, this guy, um, Edward Bernays? Do you yes. know about that guy? The guy who like, invented, his name right. yeah, the guy who invented PR. Right, exactly. And so uh, one, of, one, one of his amazingly horrible discoveries was that if you take a brand and tie it into any kind of um, social sentiment, then uh, the brand is going to, like, for example, uh, it, he came up with the idea, when, women weren't smoking at one point, mm -hmm. so uh, his plan was, how do we, well, the tobacco companies came to him and said, how do we get women to smoke? Smoking is associated as, with men, it's a masculine thing to do. We only have half the market. How do we poison 100% of the people? And so Bernays' brilliant idea was, well, all you have to do is make smoking a sign that you support women's rights. <laughs> so in the Macy's Day Parade, all these, they set up a press event where all these women pulled out cigarettes and started smoking. And these were uh, women who were f for the idea that women should be able to vote. And so the idea is, oh, by smoking, I'm supporting uh, the women have the right to smoke. And so it became uh, an activist move to smoke. So in the same way, American Sniper, which as far as I'm concerned, is just a big pile of cinematic diarrhea, is somehow managed to tie itself to the support of the troops or lack of support of the troops. So if you don't like this movie, which to me just, it just, it was all, it was just a terrible, they couldn't even get a real baby. <laughs> How do you mess that up? How do you mess that up? That's a million zillion dollar movie. You can get tanks, you can get helicopters, you can get mortars, but you can't get a baby. That's how evil that movie was. Even babies couldn't get near the movie. They couldn't get around Clint Eastwood because he would jump on them and suck their blood out of their little necks. So they had to use a doll. Um, so yeah, anyway, yeah, that, that's what they did with that movie. So if you come out against that movie, then you will get a billion tweets from people saying, you just hate, that. you must hate the troops. It's not about the troops. It's about an awful, stinky movie. I support all troops. <laughs> it's been, well, it's, uh, exactly. I mean, it's been difficult for people in Hollywood to even come forward and criticize the film. Seth Rogen initially came out likened the film to Nazi propaganda, but then he came out with this ridiculous apology saying he never likened the film to that. He never meant to criticize it. He loves oh, I the read troops. That. I read that. Why is the Illuminati, that, that why is the Illuminati forcing an apology here, Duncan? I don't think it's the Illuminati. I think what <laughs> happens is somebody calls Seth Rogen and says, listen, here's how much you tend to make per movie. And if people think that you don't support the troops, uh, then you're going to make this much less, which amounts to, you know, probably a few million dollars. And maybe you hear that kind of stuff and you make the decision to move in the opposite direction. Not that that's, maybe he does, maybe Seth Rogen really did just mean it sort of uh, structurally mm -hmm. matched the movie in Inglori the, the sniper movie in Glorious Bastards. And, and I don't know why people are afraid to come out against war. I don't understand that. I don't know how the, the idea that you would be against any kind of movie glorifying murder, uh, if you come out against that, somehow that suddenly means that you are unpatriotic. And that kind of in, in, insanity is the root cause of so many problems in the world, it seems like. It's that insane idea that uh, if you are against war, if you're opposed to the concept of uh, change the, if, if you're opposed to the idea that the best way to change things in the world is by turning children into hamburger meat, then somehow that makes you a threat or dangerous. Mm -hmm. I think if you want to support the troops, what you do is you first support all troops all over the world. Support all troops. <laughs> Let's support every single troop all over the world because all of those troops have something in common, which is that they are doing the bidding of millionaires. That's what it is. They're just doing what millionaires tell them to do. And they're generally doing it because they think it's the right thing, because that's part of the conditioning, isn't it? In the United States, in Russia, in Korea, in China, what, are they, what do all the troops have in common? 
they all think that they're doing the right thing for mm -hmm. their country. Mm -hmm. And where that kind, where that starts getting strange and weird and sad, is when you realize that a lot of the things that they're doing aren't really based on the will of the people, but are quite often to empower and hold up a very small percentage of the humans on the planet who make a ton of money selling bombs. Think about that. There are people in this world right now who are making millions and millions and millions of dollars selling bombs that turn children into hamburger meat. It's really fascinating. Like, imagine if there was an ATM where you could take a baby and put it into the <laughs> ATM and there was like a blender sound and then oh money came God. out. Jesus That's God. what they're doing. That's the most. That's uh, what you're doing if you're so. That's the most uh, accurate yeah, and, and crude analysis I've ever heard to explain uh, the foreign policy going Thank on you. right now. Thanks, Duncan. You know, and I, I was joking Thank about the you. Illuminati thing, but I mean, I've been called a member of the Illuminati for simply wearing certain clothes, jewelry. Welcome to the club, right? I, it is weird. <laughs> You know, let's talk about <laughs> Brian Williams because everyone is up in arms. You know, Hollywood is one thing. You have the Pentagon working, you know, with the Americans and vetting every script to do that show. And, and all these shows, they actually give military equipment to people like Clint Eastwood to do these pro-war movies. But then you have the mainstream yes. media, right? Where NBC anchor Brian Williams is, everyone is up in arms on him because he has this fog of memory. You know, meanwhile, there's zero accountability. Nor apology for incessant, incessant fear mongering on behalf of a media apparatus that continues to get us into war. But Duncan, really, at the end of the day, why do you think Williams would try to steal the thunder from these heroes fighting for freedom? People, when they watch the news, uh, I think that they forget that what they're seeing is entertainment. Mm -hmm. They think that what they're watching is some kind of portal into some authentic truth or a representation of what could actually be happening in the world when really they're seeing a kind of funhouse mirror that is being bent and warped and twisted with the intention of drawing as many human beings into their living rooms to watch this. That's what it is. So mm -hmm. whether the news is right or not right, um, I, I think it's impossible to say. I know that in Los Angeles, I've gotten phone calls from my dad being like, are you okay? Are you all right, son? And I'm like, what, what, what? It's a beautiful day. It's like the mudslides, Duncan, the mudslides. It's like, dad, I'm nowhere near a mudslide, but because the people who are in charge of programming have a certain amount of phenomena that they can pick from in the day, they know that they have to pick the phenomena that is going to magnetize the eyeballs of as many people as they possibly can. And so in that way, uh, what we're seeing, of course, is not reality. What we're seeing is just a sort of a watch being swung mm -hmm. by some kind of brilliant hypnotist trying to keep our attention spans on the TV long enough so that we can get to the car commercials and the ambient commercials and all the various commercials that are giving money to the people who are running the news station. So I think it's funny that people would get up in arms over the fact that one of these journalists might have lied because that just means that they've allowed themselves the pleasant delusion that what they're watching is in any way a reflection of what could really be happening in the world. And let's talk about some more disaster porn that everyone is all up in arms about, uh, both Russia and the U.S. Of course, the media is hyping up a new Cold War between the two countries. On one hand, of course, Russia has been dangerously arming rebels in eastern Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.S. is thinking now of sending weapons to Kiev. And now it just comes out on the heels of all of this. This is absolutely absurd. All of the media yesterday, the Pentagon spent probably millions of taxpayer dollars, I'm imagining, to determine that Putin has Asperger's syndrome. Money well spent? Well, I mean, look, I think it's really important to take a look at, 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 not, at all the world leaders. And, and not just Putin, not just Obama, but any world leader. Like, anytime somebody makes themselves a leader, they automatically seem ridiculous. You know, like, mm -hmm. anytime somebody, like, you could take all of them, take Putin, take Obama, put them side by side. Like, imagine if they were in a zoo. How fun would that be? Like, if we had a zoo where we could capture the world leaders and put them into the zoo and put little plaques in front of them and on the plaque uh, put, put, you know, Russian world leader um, thought blowing people up was a, a right thing to do. American world leader thought blowing, blowing people up was the right thing to do. That's what they both have in common. They're both very charismatic, so they're really good at convincing other people that blowing 
uh, people up is a good thing to do. They're so good at that. They're really slick when it comes to mm -hmm. convincing you that uh, a good move from time to time is to send mortars landing in people's neighborhoods or drones dropping down bombs on ordnance on wedding parties. They're so good at that. They're like, they're such a dangerous kind of creature. So Asperger's, does Putin have Asperger's? Uh, does, does Obama have some kind of strange thing? I think all world leaders share an undiagnosed form of mental illness, which is that uh, the belief that there is, um, there are countries and that <laughs> the, the <laughs> artificial borders that we place uh, all over this beautiful planet of ours have any real meaning, you know, and that, that, that somehow defending these artificial borders that we've placed all around this beautiful planet, uh, part of that defense involves, in their minds, uh, rightfully exploding children. So those are some really strange animals, you know? Like if you were in a forest and you and a president came wandering out of the woods, you would probably run if you were smart. <laughs> you wouldn't want to get around him. Because well, if you spent too much time with him, the next thing you know, you'd be wearing camouflage, uh, sniping babies in some foreign country. It, it always goes back the to right the sniping thing. babies. Everything goes back yeah, to Yeah, you got to sit. Hey, listen, you know, you're going to have to <laughs> snipe a baby. Can you imagine if that was your job description? Like if you went in to get a job somewhere and someone's like, so you're gonna get some great benefits, we're gonna pay for your education. <laughs> From time to time, you will have to snipe a child. <laughs> you're gonna be like, I'll pass. You know what, I'll pass. I'll just be homeless. That sounds better. Let's talk about your recent work. You did a Comedy Central short for This Isn't Happening. I was dying laughing all morning watching it about your oh, best you. and worst LSD trip. Uh, Duncan, do you think that if psychedelics were less taboo, more available, that organized religion would be on the decline? No, I think organized religion would benefit from the legalization of psychedelics. I think that uh, the roots of organized religion uh, go deep into the, into the mind states that are accessible through psychedelics and um, I think there's a, a, a benefit for all, not just for religion, but for society in general. So no, I don't think religion would decline. I think that what would happen is people would use these substances to connect with the thing that all religions are pointing in the direction of. And unfortunately, because of the prohibition in the United States that happened thanks to uh, Nixon, uh, all research on these chemicals was banned, and now the research is reopened. There's a lot of really promising studies that are coming out right now uh, that, that seem to indicate that psilocybin, uh, the psychoactive ingredient in mushrooms, can help people stop smoking, mm -hmm. uh, and also that it can help ease the anxiety that happens when you have a terminal disease. And uh, there seem to be some other benefits that they're finding out about uh, as well. And those are easily Googleable, Googleable out there if you want to check it out. Uh, so I think we are, you know, that's something we have to look forward to is the fact that these substances are going to become less taboo and hopefully uh, become pr something that doctors can prescribe for people who uh, are uh, experiencing addiction absolutely. or anxiety. Absolutely. I know MAPS is on the forefront of that. Of course, Amber Lyons' website, reset.me. Uh, you're also a practicing Buddhist. Uh, recently, the Dalai Lama came out as a Marxist. Uh, Duncan, why do you choose to affiliate yourself with such commie scum? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, I don't, you know what? I don't know too much about Marxism. Uh, I tried to, I tried to uh, read the Communist Manifesto when I was younger because <laughs> I thought it would annoy my mom. But I, I really couldn't, I, I couldn't get that, that deep into it. But I, I do love Buddhism. Um, and I do love the Dalai Lama. So if the Dalai Lama is saying that he is a fan of Marxism, there must be something there, I would say. But I imagine that Buddhism probably takes it a few levels deeper than Marxism, which is uh, instead of uh, pointing out the ridiculousness of uh, ownership, perhaps, or the idea of like, you know, having machine gun nests surrounding your whatever the particular palace or mansion is or country or whatever that you're trying to protect from the heathens of the world, it goes a few steps deeper and shows that uh, not only is the, is the idea of 
uh, uh, holding on to any possessions or anything ridiculous, but the idea that you are a self that, that's going to stay the same is also ridiculous. And it's a beautiful religion. I, it's one of the most incredible religions I've ever encountered. And the more you study it, the more you find your, uh, the, your paradigm shifting in some really positive ways. It's a beautiful thing. All these isms, we got to throw them into the sea and just recognize that this is a planet that we're living on, a beautiful yeah. living planet. And that if we all work together, there is the potential that we could actually create super intelligent robots that could help us build interstellar spaceships that perhaps could carry us into the far reaches of the cosmos, Star Trek style. And though that may seem like the ravings of a uh, stoner hippie, I think that uh, it really is w one of the great potentials that we have as a, as a I species. I totally agree. And it's very, and anything that gets us closer to that, I'm a fan of, so. Yeah, I totally agree. Hooray for it's, Marxism it's, if, it, if it gets me on a spaceship or <laughs> helps me create a sex robot. <laughs> Duncan, you have tons of or stuff both. going on all the time in LA. Uh, tell us what you have coming up, where people can find out more about you. Well, I've got a uh, live Duncan Trussell Family Hour podcast is going to be happening in the improv coming up. I've got a, t uh, a lot of tours coming up with the podcast. Uh, and I would just love for people to check out my podcast if you get a chance. Um, but you don't have to do that. Just uh, <laughs> shampoo your dog, massage your grandmother's feet. Just be happy today. <laughs> Thanks, Duncan. Duncan Turn Trussell. off the news. Turn off. Why are you watching the news? Turn off the news. Duncan Go outside. Duncan Trussell, comedian host. Duncan Trussell, family art. Thanks so much for coming on.